When humans finally joined the war against the Daxamites, it didn't matter that the galaxy had burned for centuries, or that a trillion souls had already perished screaming. The humans won the war in just five hours. Captain Robert Phillips stood on the bridge of the EDS Retribution. He watched streaks of starlight smear across the void, a heavy weight pressed on his chest. The ship's titanium deck plates thrummed beneath his boots. The Galactic Alliance had begged Earth to join the war for years. But the humans stayed out of it, even as the Daxamites butchered entire worlds. The Alliance was losing. Bad. The Daxamite Emperor Tharos would soon conquer the galaxy, and Earth would be next. The Alliance sent Ambassador Zorril to Earth one last time, to beg the humans to fight. High Command gave Captain Phillips a small fleet, Earth's most advanced to ships and weapons. Phillips had to win this battle, or humanity would burn like all the rest. Tharos would make sure of that. The EDF fleet dropped out of FTL the five human warships gliding into formation near the Adraxian homeworld. Captain Phillips stood on the bridge of the Retribution, studying the holographic display of the assembled ships. The Alliance fleet hung in space, a ragtag collection of vessels from a dozen different races. Scorch marks and hastily welded patches of hull plating stood out on the ship's battered exteriors. Looks like they've been through hell, Commander Johnson remarked, shaking his head. Phillips nodded grimly. And we're about to dive right into it with them. A hail from the Alliance flagship interrupted any further conversation. Admiral Zorel's image flickered to life on the viewscreen, his azure skin pale with exhaustion. Captain Phillips, I cannot express my gratitude for your timely arrival, Zorel said, his voice strained. I fear we would not survive another engagement without your assistance. Phillips inclined his head respectfully. We're here to help in any way we can, Admiral. What's the situation? Zorel's expression darkened. Our intelligence suggests the Daxamites are preparing for a massive offensive within the next 72 hours. They're targeting our key worlds and supply lines. We believe Emperor Tharos himself will be leading the attack from his flagship, the DIS Supremacy. It's a dreadnought with firepower unlike anything we've ever seen. Phillips absorbed the information, his mind already racing with potential strategies. Understood, Admiral. We'll need to integrate our forces and come up with a plan quickly. As the human crews began to mingle with their Alliance counterparts, the disparities between the two fleets became increasingly apparent. The EDF ships boasted advanced energy shields, plasma weapons, and sleek, maneuverable fighter craft. In contrast, the Alliance vessels were equipped with outdated laser cannons and lumbering heavily armoured battleships. In the Retribution's briefing room, Phillips gathered his officers and a select group of Alliance commanders. Holographic projections of the combined fleet hovered above the table as he outlined his proposed strategy. We need to play to our strengths, Phillips explained, gesturing to the human ships. Our vessels are fast and powerful. We can use them as a spearhead to punch through the Daxamite lines, while the Alliance ships provide support and cover fire. An Adraxian commander, his crimson scales glinting under the room's lights, leaned forward. You expect us to trust the fate of our worlds to a handful of human ships? Phillips met the alien's gaze unflinchingly. I expect us to work together, commander. Your ships have the armor and numbers to keep the Daxamites occupied while we strike at their critical points. Together we have a chance. Divided, we fall. As the meeting adjourned and the fleet prepared for battle, tension hung thick in the recycled air. The alien crews eyed their human allies with a mix of skepticism and grudging respect. Phillips and his officers moved among the ships, working to build bridges and foster a sense of unity. They had 72 hours to forge a cohesive fighting force from the disparate elements of the Alliance and EDF. 72 hours to find a way to stop the Daxamite advance and turn the tide of a war that had consumed the galaxy for centuries. Phillips knew it would take every ounce of skill, courage and cooperation they could muster. But as he looked out at the stars, at the ships that now represented the last hope for countless worlds, he felt a flicker of determination ignite within him. They would face this challenge as one, 
and they would emerge victorious. There was no other choice. Captain Phillips stood on the bridge of the retribution, his eyes fixed on the holographic display. The combined fleet hung in space, a mix of human and alliance ships, all waiting for the inevitable Daxamite attack. Suddenly, an urgent transmission from EDF High Command flashed on the screen. Phillips opened the message, his brow furrowing as he read the contents. Human spies deep within Daxamite territory had uncovered a terrifying secret. Emperor Tharos planned to unleash a devastating new weapon called the Star Crusher during the upcoming battle. The intelligence described it as a moon-sized battle station capable of harnessing a star's energy and firing it in a concentrated beam. The Star Crusher could obliterate entire fleets and planets in a single shot. Phillips clenched his jaw. The Alliance's defensive strategy wouldn't stand a chance against such a weapon. He slammed his hand on the intercom. Admiral Zorel, we need to meet immediately. I have critical information that changes everything. Minutes later, Phillips stood before Zorel and the other Alliance leaders in the flagship's briefing room. He laid out the intelligence, watching their faces grow pale with each revelation. Our current plan won't work, Phillips said bluntly. The Star Crusher will tear through our defenses like tissue paper. We need to strike first before they can deploy it. A Corvanian commander slammed his fist on the table. Are you insane? A preemptive attack could lead to catastrophic losses. Phillips met his gaze unflinchingly, and if we do nothing we face certain annihilation. The human fleet's technology and weapons give us the best chance of success. The room erupted into heated debate. Phillips argued his case, pointing out the dire consequences of inaction. Finally, after much deliberation, the Alliance leaders reluctantly agreed to the plan. Phillips wasted no time. He handpicked a team of his most skilled pilots and marines, for a daring raid on the Daxamite staging area where the Star Crusher was located. They would infiltrate the base and sabotage the battle station from within, while the rest of the fleet engaged the Daxamite forces as a distraction. As the strike team boarded their ships, Phillips clasped the shoulder of Lieutenant Commander Sarah Thompson, his most trusted officer. I'm counting on you, Sarah. Get in, take out that weapon, and get out alive. Sarah nodded, her eyes blazing with determination. We won't let you down, Captain. The operation began with a flurry of activity. The human strike team, led by Sarah, successfully breached the Daxamite defenses and boarded the Star Crusher. They moved swiftly through the corridors, planting explosives at critical junctures. But as they pushed deeper into the battle station, they encountered fiercer resistance than expected. Emperor Tharis's elite troops swarmed the corridors, engaging the human forces in close-quarters combat. Plasma bolts and laser blasts filled the air, the stench of ozone and burnt metal permeating the atmosphere. Sarah ducked behind a bulkhead, her rifle clutched tightly to her chest. She glanced at her team, their faces grim and sweat-streaked. They were outnumbered and outgunned, but surrender was not an option. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. With a rallying cry, Sarah led her team in a desperate charge, determined to complete their mission no matter the cost. They fought with a ferocity that belied their small numbers, driven by the knowledge that failure was not an option. As the battle raged on, Captain Phillips could only watch and wait, hoping that his gambit would pay off. The future of the Alliance, and of all free species in the galaxy, now rested on the shoulders of a handful of brave humans, fighting an impossible odds deep within the heart of the enemy's most terrifying weapon. Robert and his team battled through the Daxamite troops, plasma rifles flaring in the stark corridors of the Star Crusher. The control room loomed ahead, a reinforced door barring their path. Sarah cracked the lock with a well-placed plasma charge. The door hissed open, revealing Emperor Tharus himself. The Daxamite leader stood tall, his ornate armor glinting in the dim light, you're too late, human, Tharos sneered, drawing an energy blade from his hip. The Star Crusher will fulfill its purpose, and your pathetic alliance will crumble. Robert stepped forward, his own plasma rifle leveled at Tharos. We'll see about that. They clashed in a furious melee, energy blade against plasma rifle. 
Sparks flew as they traded blows, their movements a blur of speed and precision. Robert ducked under a vicious slash and slammed the butt of his rifle into Tharos's chest. The Emperor staggered back, his armor dented. With a roar of anger, Tharos lunged forward, his blade slicing through the air. Robert sidestepped the attack and delivered a powerful kick to Tharos's knee. The Daxamite leader fell to the ground, his energy blade clattering across the floor. Robert pressed the barrel of his rifle against Tharos's throat. It's over, Tharos, Robert growled. Surrender now. Tharos laughed, a bitter, hollow sound. You fool, you have no idea what you're up against. What are you talking about? Tharos's eyes gleamed with a fanatic light. The Star Crusher isn't just a weapon. It's our only hope against the Void Harbinger. Robert frowned. The Void Harbinger. An ancient evil stirring in the depths of space. It will consume everything in its path, and the Star Crusher is the only thing that can stop it. Robert's mind raced. If Tharos was telling the truth, destroying the Star Crusher would doom the galaxy to a fate worse than Daxamite rule. But could he trust the Emperor's words? Sarah's voice crackled over the comm. Captain, we've secured the control room. What are your orders? Robert hesitated his finger hovering over the trigger. In that moment, he made a decision that would change the course of history. Stand down, he said, lowering his rifle. We need to talk. Over the next few hours, Robert and Tharos forged an uneasy truce. They contacted the Alliance leaders and revealed the truth about the Void Harbinger. The news sent shockwaves through the fleet, but in the face of annihilation, old grudges seemed petty and insignificant. Human and Daxamite engineers worked side by side, modifying the Star Crusher to channel the power of multiple stars. Time was running out, and every second counted. The Void Harbinger emerged from the depths of space, a colossal entity of pure darkness. The combined fleet opened fire, plasma cannons and energy torpedoes flashing against the entity's inky hide. But their weapons seemed to have no effect, and the Harbinger continued its relentless advance. Robert and Theros stood on the bridge of the Star Crusher, their faces grim. They both knew what had to be done. It's been an honor, Theros, Robert said, extending his hand. Theros clasped it firmly. Likewise, Captain, let's finish this. Together, they piloted the Star Crusher towards the heart of the Void Harbinger. The battle station shook and groaned under the strain, its hull buckling as it plunged deeper into the entity's mass. Robert closed his eyes, thinking of Earth, of the countless lives he was giving his own to protect. Beside him, Tharos whispered a prayer to the Daxamite gods. The Star Crusher detonated in a blinding flash of light, a supernova of energy that consumed the Void Harbinger from within. The entity convulsed and writhed, its form unraveling like smoke on the wind. And then it was gone, and the galaxy was still. The war was over, but the cost had been high. The Alliance and the Daxamites had lost their leaders, but in their sacrifice, they had found a common purpose. As the fleet began the long journey home, humans and aliens alike knew that the galaxy had been forever changed. The old hatreds had burned away, and in their place, a new hope had risen from the ashes. The war was over, but the scars remained. On the Adraxian homeworld, a memorial rose from the rubble, a testament to the fallen heroes who had given their lives to save the galaxy. The names of Robert and Tharos were etched into the shimmering metal, their sacrifices forever remembered by those they had saved. Arya Vasquez stood before the monument, her eyes tracing the letters of her mentor's name. Robert had been more than just a captain to her. He had been a friend, a guide, and a symbol of hope in the darkest of times. She felt the weight of his legacy on her shoulders, a burden she was determined to bear with honor. As the Alliance and Daxamites worked to rebuild their shattered worlds, Arya threw herself into the task of maintaining the fragile peace that had been so hard won. She worked tirelessly to strengthen the bonds between the once warring factions, knowing that their unity was the key to preventing future conflicts. But even as the galaxy began to heal, a new threat stirred in the shadows. The Zephyrians, once trusted allies, 
had been secretly developing their own version of the Star Crusher technology, using the knowledge they had gained from the battle against the Void Harbinger. General Zaxis, the leader of the Zephyrian military, was a ruthless and paranoid man, consumed by the fear of another galactic threat. He believed that the only way to ensure the survival of his people was to seize control of the galaxy, using the power of the Star Crushers to dominate the other races. Without warning, the Zephyrians launched a devastating surprise attack on the Alliance and Daxamite worlds, their fleet of Star Crushers tearing through the defenseless planets like a hot knife through butter, the fragile piece shattered like glass, and the galaxy once again found itself embroiled in a brutal war. Aria and her allies were caught off guard by the Zephyrian onslaught, their forces still recovering from the losses they had suffered in the previous conflict. But they refused to surrender, rallying their troops and mounting a fierce counterattack against the invaders. The battles that followed were intense and costly, with millions of lives lost on both sides. Entire worlds were reduced to rubble, their populations decimated by the relentless bombardment of the Star Crushers. But the Alliance and Daxamites fought on, driven by the memory of those who had fallen and the knowledge that they could not let the Zephyrians succeed. As the war ground on, Arya found herself at the center of a daring plan to end the conflict once and for all. She assembled a small team of elite soldiers from the Alliance and Daxamite ranks, each one hand-picked for their skills and bravery. Their mission was to infiltrate the Zephyrian command center and capture General Zaxis, cutting off the head of the snake and bringing an end to the war. It was a dangerous gambit, but one that Arya knew they had to take. The team struck hard and fast, catching the Zephyrians off guard and fighting their way into the heart of the enemy stronghold. The battle was brutal and bloody, with each side taking heavy casualties as they clashed in the narrow corridors and cramped chambers of the command center. In the end, Arya and her team emerged victorious, dragging a battered and beaten General Zaxis from the ruins of his shattered base. But as they prepared to take him into custody, the general revealed a shocking truth that would change everything. The Zephyrians had discovered a dormant void harbinger entity within their own territory, a slumbering horror that threatened to awaken and consume the galaxy. It was this fear that had driven them to seek control, to use the power of the Star Crushers to protect themselves from the coming darkness. Aria realized that the true enemy was not the Zephyrians, but the Void Harbingers themselves. She knew that the only way to end the cycle of war and destruction was to destroy the remaining entities once and for all. With a heavy heart, Arya and her team set out on a perilous journey to locate and eliminate the dormant threats. They faced unimaginable horrors and challenges along the way, each one testing their resolve and their loyalty to one another. In the end, they succeeded in their mission, but at a terrible cost. Many of Arya's friends and comrades fell in battle, their lives given in service to the greater good, and Arya herself was gravely wounded, her body broken and bleeding as she lay in the arms of her Daxamite companion. As she felt the life draining from her body, Arya reflected on the true cost of war, on the sacrifices that had been made and the lives that had been lost. She knew that the galaxy would never be the same, that the scars of the conflict would linger for generations to come. But she also knew that there was still hope, that the unity and strength of the Alliance and Daxamites could overcome any obstacle. With her last breath, she whispered a prayer for the future, a hope that the mistakes of the past would not be repeated and that the brave souls who had fought and died would be remembered forever. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.